everybody i'm shauna and welcome back to my channel shauna missy me hd where i strive to help you achieve your educational goals by helping you gain admission into health related undergrad and graduate programs and today we are specifically talking about anesthesia i have a lot of followers and viewers who want to know more information about becoming an anesthesia assistant and this video is all about that in comparison to crna and or becoming an anesthesiologist If you are new to my channel, go ahead and press subscribe and make sure you press the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. So if you haven't already checked out my video, How to Become an Anesthesiologist, that video will explain in depth how to go from a high school student slash college student to actually board certified anesthesiologist. Um, I will also have another video that I will release soon that kind of goes a little bit more into depth about each process in med school as well as residency because I've gotten a lot of follow-up questions about what exactly to do in both situations if you want to come if you want to go into anesthesia as a physician. But this video is pretty much going to highlight some of the main differences between an anesthesia assistant and a CRNA as well as an anesthesiologist. Anesthesia assistant is pretty much a newer field uh, in comparison to anesthesiology as a physician and then also a CRNA. Um, within the last 50 to 60 years, I believe, this information is coming from a, a recent uh, AA graduate who I met at a hospital. Um, he told me that, uh, you know, the programs are fairly new. There are only so many um, in the United States and I'll, I'll post up a list of those schools with I believe Emory being the oldest um, anesthesia assistant school so that is one huge difference also is that anesthesia assistants are not recognized throughout the country so there are only so many states who actually have licensed anesthesia assistants okay so there are some states that do not recognize that practice as of right now but from what I have read and what I'm learning is that it is a growing field and more and more uh, states will most likely go ahead and start to license and recognize that field um, Another thing is salary. A lot of people ask me about salary. Like, should they go into, uh, you know, CRNA, or, you know, to make another 10 or 15K more than an AA? Honestly, it sounds like depending on the location or uh, where you work and maybe the type of structure that you work in uh, is going to determine exactly how much you get paid. But from what I'm seeing and what I've been told by AAs and CRNAs is that the typical salary for both can range anywhere from 130, 140K to 170, 180K. Some CRNAs may make over 200K depending on where they are as far as location. Uh, but for the most part, I think most people kind of fall within that range. Um, as far as anesthesiology, uh, most anesthesiologists probably make about double uh, what an AA or a CRNA would make. Um, now fresh out of you know residency that's totally different but a seasoned or a experienced anesthesiologist is probably making somewhere around 400k or more as far as how long it takes to become an AA I think it's very similar to CRNA um, so for AA school most programs are two to three years with Case Western being a fast track program which you can get it done in two years so in comparison to a CRNA CRNA schools are now ranging from that two to three year mark and then with um, the requirement of being doctor prepared most will probably kind of uh, head toward that three year mark and of course to become an anesthesiologist uh, MDDO you have to do four years of medical school and then four years of residency so there's obviously a huge difference in length of training to become a doctor and to become an AA you can major in anything you just need to complete the pre-med courses while in college and then for AAs I actually did not know that some of the schools or most of the schools require the MCAT in addition to the GRE. So for anesthesiologists, people who want to go to medical school, you only need the MK, you don't need the GRE. For CRNA, you have to be a nurse, right? So you don't get to major in anything. You can get a bachelor's degree in anything, but you still have to go to nursing school and become a nurse 
and spend so much time in the ICU or whatever before you can go on to CRNA school. And then for AA, like I said, you can major in anything, take the pre-med courses, take your MCAT, take your GRE, apply to AA school, and then be done with it. So the process of how you actually become one is also slightly different. Because there are only so many programs in the United States for AAs, you have to know that it's probably very competitive and they only take so many students. It sounds like they're not taking uh, you know, class sizes more than 30 or 40 students or something like that. I'm not sure. Do not quote me on that. But it's nothing in comparison to CRNA classes or med school classes that get up to 100 or some students. So... 200 some students actually <laughs> so um, make sure you are fully aware of how many seats are available how many uh, programs there are in the US are you willing to move to those states that um, offer these offer this program offer this degree uh, are you willing to move to those states that actually recognize the field and you know be able to be licensed to practice um, those are definitely two things that you need to take into consideration otherwise if you're don't if you don't currently live in a state I wouldn't say that they're not going to move toward the direction of honoring that uh, field but definitely CRNAs are in full force all over the country anesthesia assistants actually have to practice under a licensed physician okay under a licensed anesthesiologist CRNAs do not always have to practice with or under a anesthesiologist there are some states um, and it's actually increasingly or becoming more common for states to lean towards CRNAs practicing independently so if there's something that you want to do if you want to practice on your own and not necessarily with or under somebody um, CRNA is probably the better option for you if you don't want to go to med school obviously right Obviously, we want to talk about exactly what would be your title if you pursue either three. So as an anesthesiologist, you are a physician, you are an MD or a DO. As a CRNA, previously, you were able to become one with a master's degree, but recently there has been changes. Um, for CRNAs and all CRNAs will be doctorate prepared over the next few years so you will technically have your DMP or your DNAP and if you want more information about CRNAs and SRNAs um, I also have a video where I did a collaboration with a current SRNA student you can check out those videos where we talk about hold on get out the video <laughs> take two <laughs> you can check out that video where we talk about some of the differences between an anesthesiologist and a CRNA specifically um, so back to your title and then as an anesthesia assistant that's exactly what you are an anesthesia assistant and they are master programs not doctorate programs okay So as far as what an anesthesia assistant would do in comparison to a CRNA, in comparison to an anesthesiologist, not much different, okay? So I think that the level of training and the level of uh, independence is what really varies amongst the three. Uh, so I think that there is a difference between the level of education and what a doctor has to know versus a CRNA versus an anesthesia assistant. Now I know that there are a lot of people who um, may disagree with that comment and may even be offended and it's not to offend but as a physician, as someone who went through medical school, um, I personally just feel like that there is a difference in education. Now when it comes to skill and what you actually do, there may not be a whole lot of difference from the day-to-day -day practice. So when you have a patient who is going to receive anesthesia, you're only going to offer so many types of anesthesia. You have um, something that we call MAC, you have something called regional anesthesia, and then you have general anesthesia with the LMA, general anesthesia with the ET tube, but either way it goes. Anesthesiologists, CRNAs, and anesthesia assistants do all of that. Okay, so as far as what you do on a day to day basis, it's the same. Okay, so I think the difference 
comes in obviously level of education and ultimately who is responsible for the patient's care who is responsible for coming up with the plan the management all those type of things um, and typically it is up to the physician but a lot of times we have situations where the physicians are a lot more of a team player and actually let the CRNAs and AAs have more of a hand or even take lead on what the management for the patient will be. And then there are some cases where some anesthesi uh, anesthesiologists aren't as, you know, uh, liberal and pretty much develops the management plan and the anesthesia plan and pretty much the CRNA or AA will carry the plan out. Uh, but for the most part, we will hope that the anesthesia care team um, is more of a collaborative type thing and that we're all working in the best interest of the patient and whatever the patient needs, we're there to provide. So that is the ideal situation. That is uh, what I hope to work in <laughs> in a few years, right? But that is the main difference that I think when it comes to uh, title and responsibility and as far as level of education and skills. Like I said, at the end of the day, all three professions practice the same type of medicine within the field of anesthesia. We all intubate the same. We all give the same medications. The management and the treatment plan is pretty much the same. It's just a matter of what role you want to play. Do you really want to be a doctor or do you not have to be called doctor, right? If you don't have to be called doctor, then hey, if you just want to be an anesthesia, then CRNA and AA is definitely a good option for you. Um, I think that if you want to know my take on uh, becoming an anesthesiologist versus a CRNA and if CRNA is going to take over the field of anesthesia. I also made a video about that. You, sh you guys should check it out to just get my viewpoint if you're interested. If not, if you have any questions or any comments, just leave them below. Um, again, thank you guys so much and you guys have a great day.